All of these new GTX and RTX graphics cards have been releasing every few weeks, but what does that mean for you budget gamers? Well, it means that these now older generation graphics cards are going to be going for some really good prices, so today we're going to be testing out how the GTX 960, GTX 970, and GTX 980 are performing here in 2019. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be testing out how the GTX 960, GTX 970, and GTX 980 are performing here in some 2019 gaming action. I have 10 games up for benchmarking today. And if you're new here and you want to see more PC building or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly pay some bills. NordVPN is one of the highest rated VPNs or virtual private networks that allow you to browse the internet privately, securely, and with no history logs whatsoever. It's super easy to use, all you do is select which server from around the world you want to connect to and you're done. Enjoy clutch features like double VPN protection for extra security, an internet kill switch for the very rare time the VPN disconnects, super fast peer-to-peer -peer downloads, and unlimited bandwidth for just above 3 bucks a month if you sign up for 2 years. I actually signed up for a year of NordVPN at full retail price way before they hooked me up with a referral link and a discount code for you guys, so I obviously recommend them as my go-to VPN service. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash or click the first link in the description to learn more. All right, so before we jump straight into the benchmarks, I want to quickly introduce these cards, our testing rig for the day, and also talk about the current prices of these cards. For today, our GTX 960 is the EVGA SSC model with 2 gigabytes of GDDR5. The GTX 970 that we're using is the Asus Strix 4 gigabyte or 3.5 gigabyte version. And finally, the GTX 980 that I have is the MSI Gaming 4G version, also with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5. I would have really liked to have all three of these cards with the same amount of VRAM, that 2 gigabytes is definitely going to be a limiting factor, but unfortunately this is the only GTX 960 that I have in the studio at this time. For our testing rig today we're going to be using my usual rig that I use for my budget benchmarking videos like the Division 2 one that I just released a couple of weeks ago, but instead of the normal 2200G I decided to throw in a Ryzen 5 2600X because I didn't want to have any CPU bottlenecks for this testing. That cooler on there is indeed the one from my 2700X that I wasn't using, so I decided to throw it in there because it looks baller and it's going to give it a little bit extra cooling. Also inside this testing rig is 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3000 megahertz and all 10 games are installed on a 500 gigabyte Samsung 840 EVO SSD. One more thing I want to talk about before getting into the benchmarks is the current price of these graphics cards. Now you can definitely find some crazy deals on these now two generation old cards at this point if you're patient, but let's just talk about what the current average prices are looking like. According to eBay and the last 10 recently sold auctions, the average price of a 2 gigabyte GTX 960 is around $77. The average price of a 4 gigabyte GTX 970 is $97. And finally, the GTX 980 is selling on average for around $124. Once again, these are the prices for just the generic type of card and not like the specific EVGA SSC model. So just keep that in mind if you're hunting for one of these cards specifically. In my opinion, all three of these graphics cards are solidified in their own price bracket. So it really depends on what your budget is. I can see value in all three of these price points. One thing I would recommend even before seeing the results is that if you're going to go for the lower end range with the GTX 970, I would indeed recommend getting a 4 gigabyte version because these 2019 games are definitely eating up the VRAM. And with all that out of the way, it's now time for the benchmarks. And for today's testing, I decided to benchmark all 10 games with the exact same settings. That way you can see how all of these cards are comparing side by side. The first game up was Fortnite and here are the results of all three cards with 1080p in epic settings. As you can see, these cards progress almost equally from one card to the next and the 960 is looking like you should probably put the settings down too high and the 980 can certainly handle 1440p action if you're gaming at 60 hertz. The next game up was Apex Legends and for this one I used 1080p resolution in pretty much the highest settings for everything except the VRAM setting which I set at 4 gigabytes. Once again these cards scaled up pretty well and for the 960 you get around 60 FPS with medium-ish settings. Following that was Counter-Strike Global Offensive and I used my standard 1080p and high with FXAA turned on settings. Here's the first game where we can actually see the CPU being the bottleneck. It's not an absolute deal buster bottleneck as we're still over 200 frames per second, but you can clearly see that the 970 and 980 got the exact same results. Next up was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and for this one I put the settings at 1080p and high, and I was actually really surprised at how well the GTX 960 did for this one. Getting 60 FPS on high when this game first launched was pretty much unheard of, so it's nice to see that this game is finally becoming at least somewhat optimized. And for our last easy to run game, the Rainbow Six Siege built-in benchmarking tool was up next, and in 1080p and 
culture settings, here are the results. This one scaled properly and proved that it is an optimized title just like it always is in my benchmarking videos. Getting into the tougher to run games, Battlefield 5 was up next and in 1080p and high settings with DirectX 12 turned on, here are the results. There was a huge bump from the 960 to 970, most likely due to Battlefield 5 using those two extra gigabytes of VRAM and there wasn't that big of a jump to the 980. Assassin's Creed Odyssey followed up next and in 1080p and high settings with the built-in benchmarking tool, here's another one where you can clearly see a CPU bottleneck. I say this in almost all of my benchmarking videos, but Odyssey is a really CPU demanding title, so we aren't quite getting the full picture of the difference between the 970 and the 980 here. After that, I tested Far Cry New Dawn, and in 1080p and high settings, we have pretty much the same type of results as Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You can clearly see the huge jump from the 960 to the 970, but there's a much smaller jump to the 980. And finally, the last game I tested was Metro Exodus with the built-in benchmarking tool. I made a dedicated video explaining this, but in case you missed it, this benchmark is actually way more demanding than the actual game is, so when you're playing, you can honestly expect anywhere from 15 to 30 FPS better than the results. Well, there you have it. Those are the results for the GTX 960, 970, and 980. And just like I said before the benchmarks, you can indeed buy some value in any of these cards that you go with. In my opinion, I would personally always recommend saving up a few extra bucks for something like the 970 or the 980, and I wouldn't really recommend the 960. However, on the other hand, if you have a super tight budget, it wouldn't be a bad move at all. Well, that wraps up my comparison video of the GTX 960, GTX 970, and GTX 980 here in 2019. As always, drop a comment down below if you have one of these cards or if you're thinking about picking one of these up. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, yet another gaming PC build guide. You don't want to miss that video.